When? Oh, what? <laughs> um, hi, I'm Mohit, and um, I'm the first negative. And me and my partner are basically saying that we should keep the Electoral College and not replace it with the popular vote. Um, Zachary said that you know the worth of like the vote, the American vote, is undermined because of the Electoral College system. Well, if you think about it, the Senate also does the same thing. For example, in a state like Montana, with 883,000 residents, gets the same number of Senate votes as California, 32 million people. It's the same argument, but no one's saying that the Senate should be abolished because. That was the original intent, to maintain federalism, which is a balance between the state and the federal government. And um, so, you know, if you say the Electoral College is undemocratic because it undermines one vote, a lot of other systems in America do, too, but, you know, that's the American way. And that's what the Founding Fathers wanted it. And he mentioned, you know, that geography matters. You know, here's sort of geography makes a difference, you know, because uh, uh, people in one state, you know, they have more of like a vote than another state. But you have to realize that it matters where you're from because different states have different interests. So you can't just say that, oh, just because California has more people, its, it's votes should be worth more because a state needs to stand up for itself. And that was the original intent of the Electoral College, to make sure that just because one state has more, you know, more people, it doesn't mean that the the variety of interests because of the different geographical circumstances that underlie by the Electoral College. Yeah. Um, and you also brought up that you know Wyoming has less educated people on average, and you know like more populated states have like more educated people on average. That's how average is, and you're using one state as an example. So that's kind of that's kind of just generalizing that. Oh. The electoral co college causes less educated people to be counted more because, you know, that wasn't really great proof <coughs> in one state and averages because there's a lot of, you know, average. Weird. Um, <laughs> the electoral college, you know, does not disregard the popular vote because, you know, it just finds a balance between states and the popular vote. For example, um, John Samples of the Cato Institute, which is a DC tink a think tank, said that the direct election of the president reflects the will of the majority. In contrast, the Electoral College provides representation with both the population at large and the states. You know, once again, there's a balance between the state's interests and the population at large. The Electoral College doesn't just say that the popular vote doesn't matter. It says it matters, but what also matters is different geographical interests and, you know, different states, because states have different, different wants and needs. And you said that, um, you know, because of the Electoral College, a candidate can win just because, you know, they lost, just because they, they won in the Electoral College. And, as, you know, as you said, it's only happened four times in history. And actually, the last time that it happened was 2000. And before that, it was in 1888. So if you think about it, it's one time in the past 120 years that this has happened. And not only that, you have to realize that yeah, you know, Mr. Bush, you know, won even if he lost the popular vote. But if you think about it, he only lost by 0.5% of the popular vote, and he carried 30 of the 50 states, you know, in America, 228 of the 435 districts, and 2,480 counties, you know, um, as opposed to Al Gore's um, 674 counties. So yeah, it's you know 0.5% more of the population voted for Gore, but a majority of geographical interests voted for Bush. So you can't just discount the fact that you know there's a lot of variety when it comes to geography. Yeah, and you also mentioned that um, there can be um, electors who like don't vote for how they're supposed to vote. That's only happened, actually, it's at three. You know, my source from the Illinois State University, I had a book that I checked out. Um, it said it happened nine times, and there's been 15,000 electoral votes, but um, people have only voted against the will of their constituents nine times, and in no case has this changed the outcome of an election. So yeah, you know, some person out there could be like, oh, well, I don't like Bush, so I'm going to vote for Gore, even though people in my 
area of voter privilege. But you have to think about it, it doesn't really affect the outcome. And if you really care about it that much, add a rule to the system saying they, that an electoral should vote for, you know, what they already voted for. It's that simple. It's, you know, it doesn't mean that you should change the entire system. Um, and you also brought up third parties. Well, who said that third parties were a good thing? You know, maybe having a two-party system in America is good. Because if you think about it, the third, if you think about it, um, third parties oftentimes represent minority views. And you can't have a minority view in the White House because it doesn't represent a majority of Americans or a significant proportion. And um, again, you know, Harvey Zeidenstein from the Illinois State University who wrote the book, um, it's called Direct Election of the President, said that only third parties with regional strength are capable of winning any electoral votes. As you said, you know, you have to win in a state. So if a third party has to win a state, they have to be important in a certain state. Which means that minority pol political interests, you know, would win. So I think it's better that, you know, we have a two-party system so that if a third party wants to win, they need to modify their views a little bit so they can become part of the two-party system so they don't just represent a minority view, but rather, you know, the country as a whole. And last, you know, you mentioned the whole original intent of the Founding Fathers was, you know, the whole news traveling. But that wasn't, you treat it as if it was the or only original intent. They also wanted federalism, which means a balance between the state and the national government. And they didn't want to give all the power to the population because they, I think, you know, they foresaw that different geographical interests mattered. And, you know, that, that wasn't the only original intent, the whole news traveling thing. And pretty much the Electoral College should stay and we shouldn't have popular votes because, you know, of what I said. Thank you. <laughs>